Um, uh, the program this morning is uh, honoring the congressional offices who have gone uh, above and beyond the call of duty uh, in, in teaming up with us to champion the values that we're committed to. Uh, and um, these are just all outstanding offices. We'll, we'll go into kind of individual reasons that we have to be grateful. Uh, but we're going to start out with an overview by Francesca Griffo, um, uh, the Director of Scientific Freedom for Union of Concerned Scientists, one of the, um, really the, the cornerstones of our effort for the Whistleblower Protection Act. Francesca. Thank you. I'm a little shorter, I have to put this down. Uh, good morning, and, and it's the Scientific Integrity Program at the Union of Concerned Scientists. I wish I could take on all of scientific freedom, but unfortunately, only so many hours in the day. Thank you, Tom. Good morning. Um, what I wanted to do this morning, actually, I had some other things I was going to talk about, but I'm changing them because of an announcement that was made yesterday that I thought was really important to share with you. Um, I, at the Union of Concerned Scientists, I work mostly with scientists, scientists, whistleblowers. Um, so this announcement really concerns scientific integrity, but I thought it was important. Um, yesterday, the president released uh, an executive order on stem cells, but that's not what I'm going to talk about. Also, although it didn't get quite as much attention as the stem cells, he released a memo on scientific integrity. Now, why is this important to you? Well, I think in a general sense, um, we're all fairly aware of the role of science and technology um, in our economy, even now, as it grinds to a semi-halt. Um, I think, you know, science and technology have been essential to achieving a number of national goals. And the President recognized this yesterday, allowing Americans to live longer, healthier lives, developing clean sources of energy that reduce our dependence on foreign oil, protecting our environment, strengthening national and homeland security, and more. But I think yesterday, realizing the potential of science and technology to achieve all these goals, he recognized that this requires that the administration's decisions be based on the most accurate and objective scientific advice available. Now, we can all think that this is the way it always is, but unfortunately, and I think all of you probably recognize this, it's not the way it's been. Um, it's not the way it's been, and I think partly it's for many reasons, but the fact is we can never have our eyes in the places where you know, the whistleblower community and whistleblowers can have their eyes. But what I thought was really interesting was in talking about this memo, in talking about um, you know, what he was going to do, and now I've lost the right piece of paper. I can't believe it, because I wanted to quote from it. Sorry. Oh, why can't it be here? Anyway, I'll just tell you about it. Um, what he said was, which I thought was really important, was that within 120 days, okay, not a long time, he will be, he has directed the director of the Office of Science and Technology Policy to develop a strategy to ensure a couple of things. And on that list, very significantly, I think, is that agencies have appropriate rules and procedures to ensure the integrity of the scientific process within the agency, including whistleblower protections. To me, this is, I mean, it's not the end, it's not a done deal, but I feel like it's a really, really significant milestone that we now have leadership in the executive branch that is really excited about whistleblowers, excited about and understands, I think more importantly, the idea of the accountability that we get only through having whistleblowers. Now, I think, you know, although we can hope that we will somehow create a world where this sort of accountability isn't necessary, where whistleblowers don't have to come out and risk their lives and risk their careers and rearrange everything that they know is their reality once they blow that whistle, I think the reality is, unfortunately, that we do live in a world where, regardless of which administration is in power, we will always need the eyes and the ears of whistleblowers in these agencies. It's very important. We will never have the ability, you know, even as advocacy groups and science-based groups that care about these issues and are very involved, to actually be on the ground, you know, to be able to see these abuses as they happen. Instead, we will rely on, um, you know, your 
courage and your attention you know, to the moral imperatives that drive you onward. Um, one of the things that we've done at the Union of Concerned Scientists is to survey scientists across federal agencies. Um, in the last, uh, let's see, we started in 2005. In the last couple of years, we've surveyed 3,400 federal scientists at nine agencies. And out of those, more than 1,400, who, out of the ones that responded, which was 3,400, um, said that they fear retaliation for raising concerns about the work and mission of their agencies. Now, this isn't saying I disagree with a particular piece of something that somebody's doing. This isn't talking about anything controversial. This is simply looking at the mission statement of their agencies and the work that that would logically entail and being afraid to talk about that. We have equally high numbers when we separated it out to those who are afraid to talk about it within their agency, as well as those that are afraid to talk about it outside of their agency. And clearly, for us to you know, take advantage of what science and technology has to offer, those numbers are just ridiculous. I mean, ridiculously high and should be zero. Very briefly, <clears throat> I'll just pick one example, and I, I just very quickly to go through it. And the example is beryllium. Um, beryllium is an element, it's a dangerous element, it's a poison. And I think, you know, we've had a great example of someone in the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, a scientist named Adam Finkel, who actually was a, a privy to a lot of information um, about beryllium. Um, just a quick word, beryllium is, is carcinogenic, it harms the lungs, and it's used for weapons, ceramics, computers, it's in a lot more things than we'd like to think about, frankly. But he leaked OSHA's negligence to a reporter and then was reassigned. And I'm sure you're familiar with this technique. It happens, I think, unfortunately, way too often. Um, and in the end, he did win his whistleblower case. But of course, in the end, the public didn't win because the public didn't end up with the protections that they needed. And in fact, um, it turns out that dental lab workers are exposed to beryllium as well. And of course, those exposures go on. But I think what's important is that you know, one whistleblower began the process, began to bring public attention to the issue, began the, the understanding by the public and by those in charge that this was an issue, this was important. And of course, one whistleblower is, is not enough. And that's really, I think, what we're here today is to really talk about how important it is to have so many more people when they see things like this, when they see that the science isn't serving the public good, but in fact is harming the public good that are able and willing to come forward. So I think this morning we are here um, actually to thank um, several people in the legislative branch who have uh, you know, taken this on, who have thought that it was important enough to have a leadership position in this struggle. Um, a group of folks that have, you know, really cared about this issue, worried about this issue, and have fought for these protections for all federal workers. So to make those awards, I'll hand it off. Thank you. And I am really excited about this announcement yesterday. It's a good step. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Francesca, for the good news, too. Um, it put a smile on my face listening. Um, now it's time for the, the reason why we, we had this um, um, uh, item on our program. It's to say thanks to people who, as I mentioned before, have, have gone beyond the call of duty uh, in championing whistleblower protection.